It might be the off season, but it is still time to talk basketball. What you've done if you created these opportunities. What's up everybody? It's JJ Buckets and I'm coming at you today with my mock draft for this year's NBA draft, which is eh, a couple days away. Actually, I'm assuming when this drops, it'll actually be a day away, which makes it really exciting, right? I mean, the draft season is such an exciting time of the year because it gives bad teams in particular from last season a chance to dream again, a chance to believe that one player can turn their franchise around. Doesn't always happen, obviously, <laughs> but it's the hope that dies last, right? <laughs> so for today's video, I'm gonna do the mock for you and I got a couple things I wanna get out of the way here first. Number one, the mock draft will not include any trades. Those things are too hard to anticipate. And for a fact, I know not all of these teams are gonna stay where they are. A team like say the Warriors, I'm not confident, are gonna be you know still at seven and 14 once the draft starts. Or a team like Cleveland, frankly, at number three, I'm not convinced are gonna be drafting at number three come tomorrow night, I'm guessing, based on when I'm posting this video. That being said, I just can't incorporate trades into this because I, they're too tough to guess. I'm gonna go with the order that we have in front of us now, at the time of this recording. That being said, the other thing is, this mock draft will only be for the lottery teams. So if you're in the lottery, congrats. We will be talking about your team today. If you're not, congrats. Your team didn't suck enough for me to talk about them today. So just be proud of that. <laughs> with that being said, let's hop into Detroit at number one. I don't care how many reports I see about the Pistons not being sold on number one and them still deciding between Green, Mobley, Cade Cunningham. Let's not overthink this. Cade Cunningham is the number one overall pick here. Detroit really shouldn't hesitate about this one. He has been at that top of this draft, of draft boards, of everything all season long. Even before the season, he was at the top. It's not time to get cold feet now. Cade Cunningham is your number one overall pick for this draft. Don't waste everybody's time, Detroit. Stop putting these smoke screens up there. You're picking number one. Take Cade. At number two, there is actually a bit of a conversation to be had about who you take, but from at least enough reports and from my own kind of, I guess, gut instinct, I think the Rockets are gonna take Jalen Green number two. I know there's some questions about his defensive effort and that end of the basketball, but in a lot of other regards, Jalen Green really is a dream prospect here. He has potential number one scoring option on any team, just written right over him, and Houston has a lot of holes to fill on the roster, but in particular, nailing that you know potential number one score for your team moving forward and having a guy that you can build around of Jalen Green's regard, I don't think you pass this opportunity up. I think you have a guy that you could potentially build an offense around in Houston with Jalen Green, and kind of similar to number one, I guess. I don't think they should really overthink this. Jalen Green should be their guy at number two. Number three, we have Cleveland. And this is a pick that I'm not convinced that Cleveland is gonna stand pat and actually pick at number three. I really wouldn't be surprised if they package three away of Sexton and somebody comes in and gets this pick from them. But as it stands, I'm gonna draft as if they're taking, you know, the selection here at three. With all that being said, I would like to issue a firm apology to my Raptors fans that clicked on this video because I had Mobley in the thumb with the Raptors logo. I bamboozled you. <laughs> I think Evan Mobley is the pick here at number three. I understand that Cleveland already has Jared Allen, even though he's gonna be a restricted free agent, I think in all likelihood they're gonna bring him back. But the idea of pairing Jared Allen with Evan Mobley is just so exciting. And I think it's a fun pairing because obviously Mobley kind of has that s slender build. And despite the fact that you could absolutely play him at the five, it would be really interesting to play him at the four with Jared Allen beside him. I think that makes for a monstrous defensive duo on the inside. And a lot of just interior defense is gonna be meeting you when you try to drive on Cleveland. So that's a really exciting thought to think about. Mobley also has a lot of upside to potentially grows offensive game and really becomes something special 
for Cleveland. If they do stand pat at number three, this is a great pick for them and I wouldn't have any hesitation about it. The number four pick and the Toronto Raptors is where I think this draft starts to get interesting because here you could really lobby for Toronto to go in a lot of different directions, if I'm being perfectly frank. However, I'm gonna go with, I guess, I don't wanna say the boring pick, but the one that just seems like the safe pick, I guess, in a regard. Jalen Suggs is the selection at number four, and I'll make a couple of cases as to why. I think a lot of the things that the Raptors and Raptors fans have loved about Kyle Lowry, I think Jalen Suggs really does embody that as well. A lot of the same leadership traits and potential playmaking, I think Suggs brings a lot to the table. And then on top of that, he's also just a high-flying machine. So that's another you know, really cool dimension to add. Suggs has obviously in pre-draft interviews raved about the Raptors development. He's excited about the idea of potentially being a Raptor and frankly as am I. I think Suggs can do a lot for this team here. In particular, I do get ex fairly excited about the idea of having a Jalen Suggs, Fred Van Vliet backcourt potentially because I think Freddie could really benefit from getting to play off ball with a guy like Jalen Suggs, maybe taking the reins of the offense a decent amount of the time where Freddie can just spot up and get a lot of easy open looks off, you know, Jalen Suggs drawing attention with his drives and with his attacking of the basket. I think those two guys can play great off each other. I also think they can be a very good defensive duo. And I think the pieces are in place for the Raptors to really just return to competitiveness sooner rather than later. Number five is really a question of two players, in my opinion, for the Orlando Magic. It's Scotty Barnes or it's Jonathan Kuminga. In a way, these guys are both high upside players that you have to develop and you have to work with to fix just some facets of their game. So it really depends who the Magic would rather gamble on. I'm gonna go Jonathan Kuminga here. Firstly, because Adding a guy like Scotty Barnes, don't get me wrong, love Scotty Barnes. I think he can be a tremendous player in the NBA. But Scotty Barnes seems a little redundant when you already have a similar style of player, minus, I guess, the playmaking with Jonathan Isaac already on the roster, albeit he just had the injury, but my point still stands. With Kuminga, you get a guy that you can develop into a potential number one scoring option. I don't think he'll be there right off the bat in that regard. But Orlando is also a team that can afford to take the time to, you know, do the rebuild the proper way and really develop guys, tank for a few years, frankly, and just accumulate good draft picks and good players. And I think Kuminga really is the start of that for this team. Rounding out the top six is gonna be one of the guys I just talked about at number five. Scotty Barnes, I feel, is probably a no-brainer at number six for the Oklahoma City Thunder. He rounds out more or less the consensus top six, I would say. Barnes, as I, again, previously alluded to, high upside guy, and Lord knows the Thunder can take their time, and in all likelihood will be taking their time developing their team, developing their roster. So this move just makes a whole lot of sense for them. Barnes needs the development. Oklahoma City can afford the time to develop him and get him to the best version of himself. Feels like a bit of a hand and glove fit, frankly. Number seven is another one of those picks where I am not convinced the Warriors will actually be drafting. If the opportunity is there, I fully expect the Warriors to trade this pick for a, I guess, ready-made player, potentially a ready-made star, if some team wants to give them that. As it stands though, if they are at number seven, sticking with the theme of wanting to win now, wanting to compete now, Davion Mitchell feels like the guy of all the players kind of around this mark. You can make a case for a few of them, don't get me wrong. And there's like the verdict is still out on whether or not Mitchell is a potential star player in the league or if he's just a really good bench scoring option. In either of those scenarios though, the Warriors can really afford to be happy with either result. If they're trying to compete now, he can go in there, he can lead your second unit, he can be your sixth man, and who knows, if he really is that good, you'll find a way to work him into the starting lineup. Mitchell does seem like the player that's ready to help them compete. The Magic are back on the clock again, and for them, 
it's gonna be a similar pick, I would say, or a similar theme as it was with their previous selection of Jonathan Kuminga. They have a player that they could potentially develop into their number one scoring option. Why not double down and get a guy that could be your potential number two? Keon Johnson is still on the board here and he makes a lot of sense for this team. You get a potential dynamic scoring one-two punch with those guys. They're both players that probably need the extra time to develop and reach, I guess, everything that they can be. As I've said, the Magic can afford that time. They can afford to do this rebuild long and they can do it right. These two guys give them the scoring options that they could potentially really benefit from in the future and it helps them add to a somewhat quietly impressive young core i mean mind you if they hit on these picks you have these two guys as your scoring threats you have wendell carter jr who's a fantastic support player isaac which hopefully he will be fine after the injury speaking of guys that you're hoping that would be fine after the injury markel fultz Hopefully, I'm not banking on it, but hopefully it puts together an interesting scenario for them going forward. And it's a tandem that I like for them, you know, getting out of the top 10 with those two guys. Number nine is probably going to be the most polarizing pick that I will make in this uh, mock draft. The Kings are going to select Jalen Johnson here. And I know the opinions are absolutely split on this guy, but there's just something to envisioning him alongside De'Aaron Fox that I just think that will work tremendously. I think those two guys can play off each other really well and they can play in a good up-tempo offense. The only thing I would say for the Kings is Get rid of Luke Walton. At number 10, recently I might add, the Memphis Grizzlies have moved up in the NBA draft. Now, the word on the street is they really like somebody on the, in the lottery and they would have to to give up a very good player like a Jonas Valanciunas. The word on the street is also that it's Josh Giddy. Maybe I'm wrong for it, but I'm gonna take all of that at face value Josh Giddy is the pick here. He adds an interesting dimension to a fantastic young core that the Grizzlies have been putting together. I guarantee you this team will be very good sooner rather than later. At number 11, we have a team that was surprisingly fun this past season, the Charlotte Hornets. Obviously, they ended up falling short of the playoffs, but this was a team that was you know, kicking at that door all season. So why not add one more player that'll help them do it, right? Now, I'm gonna say Cody Zeller is a fine player, but they have a chance to, you know, get a really exciting prospect here. I wanna say little known, but I feel like a lot more people know about him now. Alpron Schengen, really hope I said that right. Um, I like him here for the Hornets. Like I said, Zeller is fine. He is a decent role player, but I don't think he's the guy that you want to be moving forward with in terms of like your center for the future. Shingun is maybe a little undersized for that spot, but he has such a interesting skill set and he can really add another layer to a really exciting young team. At number 12, we have the San Antonio Spurs. I'm going to be quick and concise about this one because at this point in the mock, this one just makes so much sense. The Spurs are not a great shooting team. You know what would definitely benefit them? An elite perimeter option in this draft. You know who's still on the board? James Booknight. Make it happen. The Pacers are a tricky one at 13. I'm still fairly convinced that the Miles Turner, DeMontis Sabonis experiment is probably over and in all likelihood they are gonna move on from Miles Turner. With that in mind, and you know, Sabonis potentially sliding to the five, Warren potentially sliding to the four, why not add Moses, Moses Moody, excuse me, at the three? He's a guy that doesn't need the ball in his hands to be effective offensively, which I think works tremendously with this team. He can play off guys like Sabonis, Brogdon, Levert, Warren, and just spot up for some really good looks. He's a very good off, off ball player and the value of that can really be good at the 13 pick here for the Pacers. Rounding out the lottery at 14 is another pick from the Golden State Warriors. As I said similarly with pick number seven, I am not convinced 
over whether or not the Warriors will actually be selecting here, so it's a bit of a tough one. That being said, I'll go with Kai Jones. I'm not particularly in love with this pick myself, I'll admit it, but I guess to kind of counter what was previously done with, you know, number seven being a win now move with Davion Mitchell, 14 is a guy that you could potentially see yourself developing a little bit and, you know, maybe taking a little bit of time to really work on his game while also just giving yourself a big man option off the bench and maybe an insurance policy if you don't really believe in James Wiseman after that rookie season, which I don't think it's time to give up on James Wiseman yet. I also just don't think it's a bad idea to have that insurance policy. And while Kai Jones might feel like a bit of a reach here, I think the Warriors could do a lot worse. And with the selection of Davion Mitchell already, you know, you've bolstered the backcourt and you've given yourself a potential six man. Why not give yourself a really solid bench big that you can work on whilst also just potentially working him into the rotation as you try to compete? That is the lottery and that is the mock draft. You know what it's time for? It is time for all of you fans of these teams to slide into the comments section and tell me why you love or, you yeah, know, in all likelihood, hate the pick that I gave your team. So drop those comments below and let me know. I know the lighting's a little off because it's been getting like progressively darker all video. Ignore that, just ignore that. <laughs> um, if you're new here, I have a usual drill that I go through and I'm gonna say it one more time here eh, and probably one more time in the video after and the video after. Like the video for me, please. It helps get the video out to a bigger audience and it does not take a lot of time. I really appreciate it when you folks do it. And if you're new here and you're enjoying the content, hit that subscribe button. The ratio on this channel for the amount of people that watch it that aren't subscribed versus the amount of people that are it's no good it's no good fix this shit that's gonna do it for me here today i will see everybody next time and i hope everybody enjoys the nba draft